So in our Hawaiian volcano summary this week, there has been an escalation of earthquakes under Kilauea summit, especially underneath the Upper East Rift connector, this area here between Kilauea caldera and Mauna Ulu. There have still been earthquakes happening in the South Caldera region, as both these areas seem to be inflating as magma comes into the volcano. The USGS states that this is due to pressure within the summit, which has activated this region before. Really, the magma is coming in and it's spreading in an area all through here to cause these earthquake effects. The earthquake numbers, raw, here they are, earthquakes per day. You can see that since a week ago, we've jumped up from in a range of 100 earthquakes per day to now we're in a range of three to 400 earthquakes per day across all of Kilauea. And looking at the USGS information statement that was, that was released last night, uh, they essentially note that the activity is reflective of increasing pressurization in the magmatic system underlying the Kilauea summit region. So there's a lot of information here. We'll, you, we won't cover every little bit of it, but you can see there's been more than 1,600 earthquakes in the six days since April 27th along that chain of craters road in the South Caldera area. Most are smaller than magnitude three, uh, there was a 3.3 on the 27th, on 28th, and a 3.1 yesterday at 4 p.m. ish. Uh, there has also been period of low frequency activity of magma movement, these long period earthquakes, showing the magma is actually flowing underground through these pathways. They note that there is inflation from both the Hale Mauma region, slightly slower and slightly faster in the South Caldera region. And ultimately, uh, what they say is that. In the past 60 years, there have been approximately 50 intrusions and five eruptions in this region. So most of the time, this activity does not lead to an eruption, but it can still. That's still a possibility. Uh, what we can expect is hard to predict at this point, but magma could keep coming in with no eruption. It could keep coming in and intrude either southwest rift zone, as it did in January, or the southeast rift zone further. It could also... Uh, erupt in the summit region. In that, situation, in that scenario, we'd imagine there would be rapid pressurization with accelerated ground formation and earthquakes. And there is possibility, the final one, of an eventual eruption outside of Caldera in the upper portion of one of the rift zones there. So that's the USGS update there. I thought we'd go in a little more detail here. Here is the map of activity for the past two days, showing where these earthquakes are located. This is plotted by depth, so these are all in a shallow region. The more maroon colors are above sea level here. And one interesting thing is if we look at the GPS stations here, this is a crater rim station. It is moving to the west while rising rapidly. If we look over here to the outlet station, it is moving to the west and rising rapidly as well. And we come down to, let's Pick one over here. This is a Hua station. It is also rising quite rapidly down here, but it is moving to the east. So these are two-year GPS plots. Each panel is, is a different component, east, west at the top, north, south in the middle, up, down at the bottom. And ultimately what this is showing us is that, let me get this out of the way here, so that these stations are moving that way. This one is moving this way. And these ones are also moving this direction. So really the nexus of ground swell is right in here. And that's where the pressure is building and pushing this whole block this direction there. As we described last week, this connector is both a pathway for magma to move through. And also it's the boundary of this Kua'e fault triangle. And as pressure moves it, it can just uh, cause it to slide and, and activate as well. So probably both of those things are going on. Interestingly, there is a cluster between Hiyaka Crater and Puuhuluhulu down here, right at the bend of the East Middle East Rift Zone. And so we'll be looking in the next week at what happens next, because this could be leading to the opening of magma into that area there. So that's a little bit of the background there. And for those on the Lower East Rift, I thought I can point out that all the stations there are all going down and moving in similar patterns as before, with only exception being Kamuamoa, the reason being Kamuamoa is over here. It's the most northern station. So activity here could actually push it to the east, but it's still dropping down in relative terms. So no magma is currently pushing anything in the east rift zone upwards, except close to the caldera there. So all, all clear for now. Uh, there has been a new uh, webcam put up by the USGS on Mauna Ulu looking northwest. 
across. This is Pawahi Crater right in here. Hiyaka Crater is just behind it back there, and a summit beyond there in the clouds today. Um, let's just look very quickly. Within the last couple hours, there's only been one earthquake here in Esther region. So they're coming in pulses, and right now it's relatively quiet. The peak was a couple of days ago, but we expect to be, expect to have more cycles of earthquakes coming through in the, in the coming week or so. That's Kilauea, very briefly. Mauna Loa is much quieter. No earthquakes at the summit region here in the last month. And overall rates for the past five years, these are earthquakes per month now, are very, very low. This here is the peak of earthquakes ahead of the eruption in 2022. So you see we're very um, calm compared to that. And that's our Hawaiian Volcano Summary for this week.